Now, some of our changes won't be universally popular. We know that. But I will do the right thing for our NHS, our economy and our children. The task before us is the work of our generation. Well, the review, which was commissioned by the government, concluded that people were struggling to get GP appointments and emergency departments were in a poor state. But have you seen your GP recently? Do you think your appointment was long enough? Did you feel like what you wanted to get over, you could get over? If you didn't, you're not alone. Two-fifths of patients say the standard 10-minute appointment slot fails to give them an opportunity to voice all of their concerns with their GP. It's all part of the bigger picture of the NHS, where the Prime Minister says... He's aware that it's in desperate need of reform. Ramaji Arora is a GP from Swinon. Ramaji, good morning. Hi there. Was, was any of what you read in the review and the report a surprise or were you just nodding your head as you leafed through it? Well, not a surprise at all. In fact, I think there's this great appreciation that finally, you know, the deficits in the NHS are being, you know, are, are now being written out loud and are being spoken out loud. A discussion is happening out there about the issues that have been chronically affecting the NHS. And finally, it seems like we have a government that's actually willing to listen and take some action. So I think I think it, it, it is enthusiastic. It is, it is a rather positive development right now. But the question is, we are good at diagnosing what would be the what would be the next step? What would be the treatment plan that th this government is going to come up with? This is the floor, isn't it? Because Lord Darcy's report w was was a report with observations, but he wasn't he wasn't tasked with actually coming up with alternatives. What what would you do straight off the bat, then, Ramaji? What what do you think would be a, a big a big help right right from the start? Well, I think you know we have to define what what is good patient care, and I think. We as GPs overwhelmingly support, you know, us spending a bit more time with the patients, getting to know the patients, you know, being able to understand, you know, their complex backgrounds. You know, people are not coming with one thing to an appointment. They're coming with at least two to two and a half things per consultation. So, and m many of these are quite complex things with, with, you know, multifaceted implications all over their lives. So, I think to be able to spend some genuinely decent amount of time with the patients will improve addressing of the more complex problems, will actually also help us to reduce, you know, the going, the revolving door that many of these appointments have become because the needs are not met in a particular appointment. The patient then has to rebook and, and, and then it becomes something of a false economy where the patient is constantly booking back back and back again, you know, just to have their needs met. So I think, yes, a, a slightly longer appointment time, you know, better continuity of care, a safe, you know, a working environment for general practice. What we have seen with the chronic underfunding is that we've got a bit of a hamster wheel situation for GPs, where we're working increasingly hard to meet the patient demand. And we're seeing patients back to back, you know, over 10 minute appointments. And what that is leading to is decision fatigue. You know, you're taking loads of complex decisions in a short period of time. And, and that then leads to, you know, collision distress. It leads to potentially unsafe, you know, uh, working environments. Ramaji, it leads to... I mean, the thing is, people I'm sure are liking what you say, but if you're giving certain people more time, that presumably, unless you're going to get loads more doctors in your surgeries, that's going to lead to even longer waits for other patients to come and see you for that longer appointment. No, I, I, I would completely agree that, you know, every every decision we make from here would actually lead to, you know, will, will lead to some compromises, some other parts. But I think that, you know, the ideal situation would be more GPs spending more time with the patients. Now, that is essentially going to need more funding. It will need to... Uh, lead, it, it, it will need better restructuring of general practice, you know, maybe better triage systems, maybe using the whole of the practice a bit better, you know, the, the whole team led working, you know, all those things need to be put in place. And I think then we might come up with, with a prescription of, of saving primary care. Uh,
I cert- the BMA has actually, you know, and the RCGP have recommended going back, going to 15-minute appointments. They're also saying that the workload currently is unsustainable, that we need to, we need, the general practice needs to slow down. We need to get down to probably three hours of consulting in a four-hour, 10-minute uh, GP session. Uh, and, and they're saying actually limit the patient contacts to 25 per day, but do, but but spend more time with the patients and actually, you know, do more complex, do, give yourself time to do more complex things. Ramaji, does, does, does yeah. it make a difference, do you think, about whether it's face-to-face or on the phone? At the moment, my mum, when I phone her every few days, will tell me some pretty disastrous stories of, you know, trying to pick up the phone quick enough when the doctor phones and they'll try again, and if you've missed that, you're, that's it. You're at the back of the queue. Do you, we still need as many face-to-face appointments or is telephone consultation acceptable? I think this is a mixed bag. I think telephone consultations uh, work pretty well for younger patients, you know, who are themselves busy, who, who cannot take time off work, who, who cannot sit and wait in the in a waiting room where the GP is probably running half an hour late because we're dealing with complex patients. So, so for some patients, yes, the telephone appointment works well. But then for some other patients, you know, the elderly, you know, those with hearing issues, those with, uh, you know, various other more complex needs, perhaps a face-to-face appointment, you know, is better. A long-duration face-to-face appointment is better. So it's a, it, that is a bit of a mixed bag. Ramaji Aurora, thank you as ever for coming on. A GP from Swindon, always um, keen to share his thoughts on what could work. 08,000-283-366, please. The last time you tried to get an appointment, did it go okay or was it a disaster from start to finish? Uh, two-fifths of patients leave their GP appointment without discussing everything that's worrying them, a survey says. The findings probably it claims that older people often feel family doctors want them out of that door as soon as possible. BBC Radio Wiltshire Breakfast. BBC Radio Wiltshire.